Hello everyone, welcome to Botany Option channel for UPC examination. In today's video, we are going to see the comparison between angiosperm and gymnosperm. We will go through the points how the angiosperms are different from gymnosperm as well as we are going to cover how the angiosperms are also similar with the gymnosperms. With this, we will try to know why the angiosperms are so successful on the evolutionary lines while the gymnosperms are lacking behind. As you know, angiosperms and gymnosperm both forms the seed plants and together called as the panorgams all right so before starting the video i request you to join the telegram channel of the same name that is the botany optional for upsc examination there we regularly upload the links of the videos plus the pdf of the topics so that you will not miss any update from the botany optional channel all right hello everyone welcome to botany optional channel for upsc examination in today's video we are going to see the comparison between angiosperm and gymnosperm we will go through the points how the Angiosperms are different from gymnosperm as well as we are going to cover how the angiosperms are also similar with the gymnosperms. Now the very first point we are going to consider here is the seed and fruits. This is the very biggest difference between the angiosperm and gymnosperm that the angiosperms has the covered seed in the fruits. Right? Angiosperm has the covered seed while the gymnosperm has the naked seed. These words angiosperms and gymnosperms are also given by the nature of the seed present in both the plant groups. Angio, which literally means covered, and sperma means seed. That is the plants which has a covered seed. While the gymnos, gymno stands for naked, and sperma stands for seed. That is the naked seed. Gymnosperm, this word literally means the naked seed, while the angiosperm, this word literally means the covered seed. As you know, in day to day life, we observe how the angiosperm has the covered seed. See this first feature in which there is an apple and we have the fruit outside while the seeds are inside. This is how the seeds are protected inside the fruits in the apple. The very similar is true for the watermelon as well. When you cut the watermelon, you will find the many seeds and these all seeds are protected inside the large fruit. The similar is the condition for the pomegranate. As you know, many seeds are covered inside the fruit. And again, the same story is for the papaya plant in which the large amount of seeds are present inside the fruit. So you can say that the angiosperm tends to secure its seed inside the fruit. While on the other hand, the gymnosperm simply have the cones and these cones contains the seeds. So in a gymnosperm, we have the naked seed while in the angiosperm, we have the seed covered with the fruit. Now this has the another evolutionary advantage. This is because the fruits are tend to eat by the many animals and after eating the fruit, these animals throw away the seeds of these plants to the different location. Now, what happens due to this? These angiosperms are able to disperse their seeds to the varied places. And due to this, they grow everywhere on the planet Earth. While on the other hand, the gymnosperm being unable to have the fruits, the animals are not interested in these gymnospermic plants. And that is why its fruit dispersal is not that much successful. And this is the very basic reason why the gymnosperm has the very limited habitat. So this is the difference between the angiosperm and gymnosperm that angiosperms has seed covered in the fruits while on the other hand the gymnosperm has the naked seed. All right. Now the second point we are considering here is a flowers. As you know there is only one group that is angiosperms which contains the flower while on the other hand the gymnosperms are without the flower. That is gymnosperm do not produce any kind of flower. They directly bears the seeds. So this is a very basic difference between the angiosperm and gymnosperm that angiosperms contains many colorful flowers while on the other hand gymnosperm do not contain any type of flower. Now again the having the flower on the plant has the many evolutionary advantages as compared to not having the flower on the plants. This is because the attractive flowers also attract the insect for the pollination and due to the insect pollination there is a maximum chances that pollination will occur. Right? While on the other hand, this advantage is lacking in the gymnosperm because they do not contain any kind of flower and insect rarely visits them because insects are only interested in the nectar and this nectar is present in the flower. In order to take the nectar, the insects always land on these beautiful flowers and in this process, they indirectly pollinate the flower. And due to this high level of pollination, the angiospermic plants become the successful over the gymnospermic plants because these gymnosperms lack all the advantages that flower can provide. So flowers is again dividing the gymnosperm and angiosperm 
that is they gives the evolutionary advantage to the angiosperm but on the other hand the gymnosperms are lacking them now let's consider the leaves of gymnosperm and angiosperm here in this first picture and the second picture you can observe the leaves of the angiosperms these are the flat leaves basic difference between the angiosperm and gymnosperm is that the angiosperm has the very flat leaves while on the other hand the gymnosperm has the needle like leaves as you can observe in this particular picture all these are the leaves of the gymnosperm which are present on the stem and these leaves are like a needle they are needle they have the needle like shape while on the other hand the angiosperm mostly has the flat leaves right as we have discussed in one of our videos gymnosperm also has a two kind of leaves that is the scale leaves while, while the others are the foliage leaves but both these leaves do not show the differentiation as much as the angiosperms all right so this is again the very basic difference between the angiosperm and the gymnosperm that the angiosperms has the very flat leaves while the gymnosperms has the needle like leaves all right now let's consider the stem or the wood of angiosperm and gymnosperm the stem or the wood of angiosperm is very heavy in nature that is the wood of angiosperm is very heavy while on the other hand the wood of the gymnosperm is soft and weightless and that is why this has a very economical advantage for the gymnosperm that its wood is always used in the ship making boat making etc because whenever we try to make the ships for the water traveling it needs to be the weightless right weightless wood is required to produce the ships and this weightless wood can be found in the gymnosperm but on the other hand the angiosperm contains the heavy wood this heavy wood has the another applications but the weightlessness of the wood of gymnosperm provide the unique opportunity in in creating the ships for the ocean travel right both the angiosperm and gymnosperm shows the woody stem so the woody stems are found in both the groups that is angiosperm and gymnosperm but the wood of the gymnosperm is weightless while the wood of angiosperm is very heavy so this is the very basic difference between the two so there is a similarity as well as the differences between the wood of angiosperm and gymnosperm that is both shows the woody habitat but the wood of angiosperm is heavy in nature while the wood of gymnosperm is lighter and soft in nature now the next important difference between the angiosperm and gymnosperm is relating with their pollination methods as you know angiosperm has a very wide range of pollination methods that is the angiospermic flower can be pollinated by the insect or bird or any animal right that is the angiosperm has a varied pollination methods it can be pollinated by the insect or butterfly or bird or say water pollination is also present there that is every form of pollination is present in the angiosperm but on the other hand the gymnosperms are only rely on the wind pollination and this wind pollination is famously called as the anemophily right the gymnosperm are only rely on the wind for their pollination purposes while on the other hand the angiosperms has the very diverse methods of the pollination and this is the very basic reason why the angiosperms are so successful in pollinating their own plants while the gymnosperm has a very low success rate when we talk about the pollination because the wind is the only method through which the gymnosperm can pollinate so again this is an difference between the gymnosperm and the angiosperm that the that is the pollination methods of the angiosperm is very diverse while the gymnosperms are only dependent on the wind pollination now let's consider the vascularity of both angiosperm and gymnosperm as you know the vascular plants possess the xylem and phloem so these are xylem and phloem are present in angiosperm as well as these are also present in the gymnosperm as well that is both angiosperm and gymnosperm contains the vascular tissues that is xylem and phloem xylem has a characteristic feature of water and mineral transport while phloem particularly transport the food material throughout the plant body so this is the similarity between the gymnosperm and angiosperm that that is both have the vascular tissues but in this vascularity there is a slight difference as well because the xylem and phloem of the angiosperm is highly developed while the xylem and phloem in the gymnosperm is lack certain features such as the vessels in the xylem and the companion cells in the phloem are present in this shows the high degree of differentiation among the angiosperms while these are vessels in xylem and companion cells in the phloem is absent in the gymnosperm they show on the evolutionary line gymnosperms are lacking they do not have the highly developed vascularity which is seen in the angiosperms right so 
there is an important similarity as well as the dissimilarity between the angiosperm and the gymnosperm about their vascularity. That is, both the angiosperm and gymnosperm contains the xylem and phloem, but the xylem and phloem of angiosperms are more differentiated as compared to the gymnosperms. All right. So you should remember that vessels in the xylem and companion cells in the phloem is well developed in the angiosperms. The vessels in xylem and companion cells in the phloem is absent in the gymnosperms. All right. Now next is the vegetative reproduction. As you know, vegetative reproduction by the cutting or layering is famous in the angiosperm, but this type of vegetative reproductive methods are completely absent in the gymnosperm. This is again showing why the angiospermic plants are found everywhere on the planet Earth. That is, they are present everywhere, but the gymnosperms shows the very limited habitat because they cannot grow vegetatively. Their reproductive methods are very limited, while on the other hand, the angiospermic plant shows the varied reproductive methods and due to this, these angiospermic plants are highly successful on the mother earth. So again, there is a basic difference between the two, that is the angiosperm shows the vegetative, various vegetative reproductive methods, while on the other hand, the gymnosperm is lacking on this front as well. Now let's compare the seed dispersal between the angiosperm and gymnosperm. As you know, the seeds of the, of the angiosperms are enclosed in the fruit, while the seeds of the gymnosperms are naked, right? So, in order to disperse the seed in angiosperm, animal plays a very vital role. As we have discussed, the animals take the fruit and take this fruit to the different locations where they eat the fruit and leave the seed. And where they, are, where they leave the seed, this plant starts to grow into the new plant. So, seed dispersal in angiosperms is largely contributed by the animals as well as by the wind, water, insects, birds, all kinds of the animals and the natural forces are involved in the seed dispersal in the angiosperm. But on the other hand, the gymnosperms are only rely on the wind. That is, their seed dispersal is largely dependent on the wind. As you can see in this picture, the wind is dispersing the seeds of the gymnosperm. But due to this limited seed dispersal methods, the gymnosperms fail to dominate the planet Earth. While on the other hand, due to the varied methods of the seed dispersal in the angiosperms, they are successfully dominating the planet Earth. All right. Now let's compare the angiosperm and gymnosperm according to their habitat. As you know, consider this picture. This is showing the terrestrial habitat of the angiosperm. This is aquatic habitat and this is desertic habitat of the angiosperm. What these pictures are showing is that the angiosperms has grabbed the various locations to grow and they has adaptability in growing in a terrestrial land, in the aquatic land, in the desertic land, that is every kind of environmental condition is captured by the angiosperms. They have various adaptations for the environment in which they can grow successfully. But on the other hand, the gymnosperms do not show such adaptability. This shows the very limited adaptability to the environment and that is why they are largely restricted to the temperate zone only. And they do not find themselves in the water as well. That is the water as a habitat is never used by the gymnosperm. But on the other hand, the angiosperms are also dominating the aquatic habitat as well. So the habit of the angiosperms is very varied as compared to the gymnosperm. And again, this is giving the angiosperm the edge over the gymnosperm in dominating the planet Earth. Now let's talk about the bisexuality of the flower in angiosperm, which is making the angiosperms king while the gymnosperms are lacking behind. Due to the bisexuality, that is the presence of both male and female organs on the same flower, this makes the assured self-pollination in the angiospermic flower. That is due to the bisexual flowers in the angiosperms, they contain both male and female parts on the same flower. This ensures the self-pollination and self-pollination is a guaranteed method of pollination in which flower is get pollinated and after the pollination which is followed by the fertilization which results in the production of fruits, right? So, this successful method of self-pollination is developed by the angiosperm, while on the other hand, the gymnosperm lacks the self-pollination and because they do not have any bisexuality. So, all these are the points between the gymnosperm and angiosperm. I hope you like this lecture. Please like the video. Please share this video with your friends who are studying the botany. And if you have any question, please make sure to comment in the comment box. And if you haven't subscribed to the Botnafta channel yet, please subscribe to the Botnafta channel for UPSC examination. Again, thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next one.